Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to go through a quick review of subtracting decimals. This should be helpful for anyone looking for a quick refresher, whether you're in middle school, high school, college, continuing your education as an adult, really, no matter what class or goal you are working towards, here are a couple of examples to get this down. Let's jump into number one, where we have 14 and 9 tenths minus 8 and 57 hundredths. Now, just like when we add decimals, when we subtract decimals, we need to line the decimals up. That's going to line up all of our places. So let's rewrite this first problem vertically here, lining up the decimals. So 14 and 9 tenths minus 8 and 57 hundredths. So the decimals are lined up, and that's going to line up all of our places. Now that problem looks a little offset because 14 and 9 tenths goes to the tenths place, and then 8 and 57 hundredths goes to the hundredths place. So just like when we add decimals, we can use placeholder zeros to have this look more lined up. So let's use a placeholder zero in the hundredths place here, and then both of our decimals go to the hundredths place. Remember, zeros to the right of a decimal do not change the value. That's an equivalent decimal and does not change the value of the problem at all. Now we're able to subtract. So we'll start with the hundredths place. We have zero minus seven, which we need to borrow. So let's borrow from the nine. That's an eight now. And we have 10 minus seven, which is three. Then we move to the tenths place, eight minus five, three. Bring our decimal straight down into the answer. The decimal is lined up throughout the entire problem. Then we move to the ones place, four minus eight. We need to borrow from the tens place here. So that's a zero and that's a 14. So 14 minus eight is six and we are done six and 33 hundredths. Now I do wanna mention one more thing before moving on to number two, and this is going to be a common mistake that you'll want to avoid. And using placeholder zeros will actually help you avoid this mistake. So let me rewrite the problem here real quick to the side. So we have 14 and 9 tenths minus eight and 57 hundredths. So dropping this seven, so starting with the hundredths place and then just dropping the seven because there isn't anything above it is not correct. We actually have zero minus seven there. So we needed to borrow and you can see we do not have a seven in the hundredths place in our final answer. So again, avoid the mistake of just dropping that number because really we have zero minus seven there and we need to borrow. So be careful of that. Let's move on to number two, where we have 262 and 33 hundredths minus 59 and 8 tenths. So we will start by lining up our decimals here. So 262 and 33 hundredths minus 59 and 8 tenths. We can use a placeholder zero, so these both go to the hundredths, and now we are able to subtract. So we'll start with the hundredths. Three minus zero is three. The tenths place, three minus eight, well, we need to borrow. So borrow from the two, that's a one, and we have a 13. So 13 minus eight is five. We can bring our decimal straight down into our answer, and now we have the ones place. So one minus nine, we need to borrow. So we'll borrow from the six. And we have 11 minus nine, which is two. Then for the tens place, we have five minus five, which is zero. And then lastly, we have the hundreds place where we have two minus nothing under it. So it's just two minus zero, which is two. And our final answer, 202 and 53 hundredths. So there you have it. There's a quick review of subtracting decimals. Line the decimals up, use placeholder zeros if need be, and then subtract. 
I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.